Hello there. Uh, now, if you put up videos on the internet, for whatever reason, people want you to do stupid, minutiae videos about things you do in your life that are sort of relevant. So that's what I'm gonna do here, okay? This is not my kind of video. People just want it. I installed OpenBSD. See that computer? It now has OpenBSD. Actually, look at that little, this little stool I've had since I was a kid. We used to stand on that to brush our teeth. That's how long it's been in my family. But uh, OpenBSD, I've installed on, on this desktop that I've had it actually forever. I've had it for a while. Um, and I haven't been, I, you know, I don't really use it. I really just have the ThinkPad that I use for everything. Uh, I have a nice little dock for it. But anyway, so OpenBSD, why did I install it? What am I looking for with OpenBSD? Now, firstly, I'll go ahead and say, don't expect OpenBSD videos from me. I'm just saying maybe I will do some. Um, actually, I canceled internet at my house, so it's a little unlikely that I'll do anything really fancy with this. Maybe I'll just toy around with it. But the reason I installed OpenBSD is partially experimentation. Um, really, I've, I've been using Linux for a while now, and of course, using OpenBSD is not supposed to be that different. Um, just the operating system does some core things better. Um, it also, I mean, the other thing is, realistically speaking, Linux... Like, I always do videos complaining about the direction of where Linux is going and how different distributions are screwing things up. Now, that doesn't really matter for someone like me, because in Linux, because I mean, you always have the ability to install what you want on your machine, right? So it's not a big deal. However, OpenBSD, OpenBSD people, um, realistically speaking, they're usually just better minded than a lot of the Linux people are nowadays. So I figure it's at least worth knowing about OpenBSD. Now before you, you try and say, oh, try free, free BSD, net BSD. No, I'm not gonna do that. I've decided OpenBSD for different reasons. Um, so I have this thing pulled, actually, let me, let's verify, let's verify that it's OpenBSD. I actually typed in the uname command. All right, look at that, OpenBSD desktop home, 6.9. It's backwards for me. I don't know if that's showing up as backwards for you, but uh, you know, that's, uh, that's how it is. Um, so uh, I'll probably play around with it. The only thing I've done now is basically install, maybe I should sit in this chair like a normal human instead of sitting on the floor like a neat. Um, uh, so all I've basically done is install a couple programs and play around with it and find all the commands that I know and love on Linux. A lot of them are not actually on OpenBSD. <laughs> so one thing I, I think I want to do is I want to take the scripts that I have publicly and I've always tried to make them as universal as possible, like th that they, you know, they're POSIX compliant and they don't have too many GNU, you know, options and stuff in there so they can run on other systems. But I think a lot of the things that, uh, it's going to be hard to live without uh, LSBLK. I always use that, but you know, there, there are just a couple commands that BSD doesn't have or they do differently. Um, now I will say, let me make a comment about the OpenBSD installation. Um, now basically they give you command line options to install, like, you, you pull it up and there's an install script and it asks you, oh, you know, where do you want to install this? Do you want this? Do you want that? Like yes, no questions and you respond to them. And I, I will go ahead and say, I do not like that, okay? I prefer, I guess, more of the Arch Linux way of installing things. And the reason I say that is because, um, you know, on Arch Linux, uh, well, okay, on OpenBSD, you're basically doing the same things, but it's not you who's running the command. You just have to trust that the script, you know, is going to partition your drives in the way that you intend. And there are a bunch of different things I had to, you know, I really wanted a command line. I, I Actually, you know, TTYs work differently. Like I was expecting to be able to just jump over to another TTY. Uh, I guess things work different. I haven't figured, you know, some basic things out on OpenBSD, as you can probably tell. But I'll just say I don't like the installation. Like, I would prefer something closer to how a lot of Linux distributions like Arch Linux install at the beginning where you run the commands. But I don't know. Well, I, I guess what's weird to me is that OpenBSD, of the people who use it, you sort of expect it to be the people who probably are a little more tech savvy than Linux users. Uh, maybe not by much, but at least by some. So you would expect that all of them would be capable of running such commands. Um, I guess they just wanted to, they just have this historic installer, which doesn't really give you the options I wanted. And, uh, but regardless, it installed very fine, all the firmware, whatever it needs. Actually, I haven't tried Wi-Fi on this. Okay. I'm, I probably need to test that. Uh, I don't know if Wi-Fi installed correctly. Uh, I haven't, I, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I haven't tested it. I don't even know the OpenBSD Wi-Fi command. 
Anyway, all of this is to say I installed OpenBSD uh, and I'm playing around with it. I'm not promising anything, um, but if things work out very well and I'm able to port over a lot of my builds of stuff, if I can port over DWM uh, and some other things, I might, I, I might seriously look at it as an operating system on my laptop. Now, the reason I didn't install it on my laptop, I actually even have uh, 30 gigabytes of free unpartitioned space on one of the hard drives that's on my laptop. But the reason I did not install it on my laptop, and I didn't think about this, I, originally I was like, oh, I can definitely put it on my laptop, but um, OpenBSD I don't think is compatible with ext4 partitions. So I was going to install a root partition on my laptop and then mount my ext4 home partition that I use on Linux. That way I could have all my data and stuff and I could start over from there. And of course, lots of little scripts would probably break, but I could fix that easy enough. But I can't do that because uh, OpenBSD, so far as I know, I sort of did some cursory looks at it, but it really, it, it, at least out of the box, it can't handle ext4 partitions uh, or file systems, whatever. I, I guess it's better to call them file systems. I don't, I don't quite know, but I don't know anything about file systems. I just always have used ext4 since I've been on Linux or NTFS if I want to have a external drive that boots, you know, connects to Windows or whatever. Anyway, now I'm just rambling. Um, so I'll try it out. I'll see how it goes. Uh, maybe it'll, something will come of it. I, I, I think I identify, uh, this, uh, that sounds like a stupid thing, this thing to say, but I really feel like I sort of identify more with the way that OpenBSD look, OpenBSD people look at some things uh, and how they've organized their op operating system. Uh, and it avoids some of the stupidity of Linux, but uh, I am content with the Linux distribution I use, Artix, and the setup that I have. Uh, so I'm not saying I'm going to switch over. I'm just saying I'm throwing it out there. This has been the first time in several years I've bothered to actually try another operating system out for myself. Uh, sometime, if I want to try an operating system out, you know, and someone asks me to install Linux, maybe I'll tell them, hey, try this so I can sort of learn about it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. My, I definitely... Uh, I don't really care about this stuff anymore, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> I don't know. That's why I do this video, because maybe someone cares. Because um, people watch this channel and think I, I put up technology stuff when I don't really. Uh, okay, that's it. See you guys next time.